Fair enough. One guy gives a shit. Yeah, right? one guy really cares. That's for sure. Well, Dana, uh, you mentioned the Colby Covington broken jaw there. We were wondering about that. I mean, listen, I know you're not a fan of that guy or haven't necessarily gotten along with him, I die, but did he did he show the world something tonight? 100%. I mean, going into this fight yesterday, I was doing interviews, and I told everybody, man, I said, listen, don't let all the bullshit and stupid talk overshadow the fact that this kid is, is tough, talented, and stylistically this fight is unbelievable. Um if you look at the stats, they line up perfectly. And uh, the question was Covington's cardio. And, you know, he has unstoppable cardio. Could Usman keep up with that? And how would Covington deal with the power of Usman? Only one way to find out, and now, now we know. Yeah. Usman's had his detractors along the way as well. And I know that, you know. I was one of them. Yeah. Absolutely. How about, you know, your take on him now after a performance like tonight? Awesome. How about the chin on him, too? You know, Covington hit him with some big shots, some knees, some elbows. Um, yeah, I mean, both these guys were blasting each other. And uh, to have a broken jaw in either the second or third round and almost finish the fight is pretty impressive. So for as big as his mouth is and all the stuff that he talks, the guy can fight. And he, he's talented and he's tough. He came in here with a game plan tonight, you know, not just fight but how he would handle himself after the fight and all those kind of things. And, and uh, Usman shut it down. You know, Masvidal has been such a big star this year. And I think if Covington had won tonight, the grudge match between the two former roommates, everybody was salivating at that idea. Does the idea of Masvidal, Usman excite you as much? It's massive. So think about this. How many times have we sat in this room, we did the lead up, to the big grudge match, these two guys hate each other and they're going into a fight, and then I'm sitting in here going, no, yeah, well, that fight sucked. You know what I mean? How many grudge match of, uh, matches have actually been incredible fights? I say none. Maybe there's one that I'm forgetting about, but they all pretty much suck. This grudge match was awesome. Two guys that are, that, that are at the top of the game in their prime, and uh, the fight was the fight of the night on an incredible card. Yeah, the, the Masvidal fight versus Usman now is a big deal. He, he you know, he, he, he fought Diaz for the BMF and now to fight for the actual title against a guy who is tough as nails is fun. Want to get your take on Volkanovski as well, man. The Australian market continues to grow and they've got great fighters down there. What, what did you think of his performance and now him as a new champion? Yeah, he looked good. And, and that market is massive for us. <clears throat> you know, so maybe we do that rematch in uh, Australia. I don't know. Just off the top of my head you touched on it right there though i mean the idea of a rematch for as long as holloway was a champion as close 100. as the fight was you think it makes sense 100 percent. nice and last thing for me you just saw amanda walk off stage she had another big win tonight the name clarissa shields was brought up because you know she's been here and in town and amanda seemed to dismiss that right away and said listen if she wants to come fight me in mma let's do it you know come to my world but i'm not interested in boxing i know you're starting to you know get into the boxing market what's your what's your take on that? do you believe this is a fight that will happen or can happen yeah, so you know, I've been talking to everybody in boxing, you know, and if you're gonna if you're gonna get to get into boxing, you want, you know, as many of the best people as you can get. So talking to Clarissa Shields and a lot of other people, and um, but Clarissa Clarissa has has shown interest in fighting. She, she you know, she uh, she's an Olympic gold med two time Olympic gold medalist, you know, um, and she comes here and she sees the press conference and the weigh-ins and the you know the arena tonight and all these things and um it's pretty badass so you know i think everybody wants to wants a taste of this so we'll see what happens dana she's a 154 pound fighter though yeah. or 60 or 68 so what do and, you do with her if you bring doing her a camp and cutting weight and the whole deal yeah i agree i mean that's a big issue yeah it's what we do <laughs> It's what we do. Well, I just just want your take on the uh, Covington Vulcan. I mean Covington uh, Usman scorecards. So yeah, you heard what it was. Yeah, three one one way, three one the other way, and two two. <coughs> I don't know. I mean, what do you want me to say? How'd you have it? I had a three to one Usman. For Usman, okay. What and you gave Covington the first round? Yes. Okay. And then Cormier had it two to two. He was smart. Yeah. How many people in here had a three to one Usman? Yeah. Two to two? Yeah. Yeah. 
And close fight. Listen, the, the, you know, after the first round, the, the they were hard to score. Those were close rounds. It was, it was uh, you know, when you take two guys that, that we said, we said it. I'm not the only guy that said it. You guys said it. Everybody fucking said it. These guys are matched up perfectly. And that's what you get. Hey, how about all the takedown attempts in that fight? <laughs> right? Zero. Zero. Yep. Yeah, it was, fa- I was, I seriously, I was so fascinated for this fight to see how this thing would play out. Um, and it was awesome. It was a great fight, you know? Both guys did something in the fifth round that was amazing. Colby, you know, picked up the pace with that broken jaw, and, you know, and he had been wearing down. And then I thought Usman, you know, it seemed like Colby had the edge in the first half of that last round. 100%. And then all of a sudden Usman must have recognized it and stepped up. And what does that say about a champion when he can understand, hey, you know what, I'm behind here. I need to do something dramatic and be able not only to try for it but to pull it out. I need to use more than 20%. Yeah, it was it – was, it was, uh, exactly what he needed to do and he did it he pulled off the finish with 50 seconds left of the fight um and a fight that the judges had all over the place so uh and colby covington was absolutely positively winning the first half of that round dana you had three great title fights tonight who impressed you the most in victory and why yeah main event main event i mean uh obviously but Bo- Bo- both fights were, were good in their own ways for Volkanovsky to come in and beat Max Holloway. Big deal. It's a big deal to do that. And, um, you know, for Amanda, she has all the hype behind her right now and everything else, but she came in and fought an absolutely positively different fighter than she did the first time. And I love that about Amanda. Cause believe me, guys, I've talked to a lot of fighters that they're like, I don't want this fight. I already beat her. I already beat her, and I'm probably not going to beat her more impressively than I did the first time. So what's the point in me even fighting her again? She took the fight. It was a tough fight. You know what was driving me crazy with Amanda, too? It's like, why are you standing up in the guard when the only thing she can do to you right now is upkick you and knock you out? That's question. You know what I mean? I'm not her trainer or fucking anything, but I don't know. I'm gonna, I got I to gotta ask her that later. Why she was, Did any of you ask her that? No, that's a good question. should have asked that. Speaking about Amanda, Dana, did you see Irene Aldana tonight? Were you impressed with her? She won. She won the uh, the performance of the night. So, Ketlin Vieira is, is one of the, you know, top five fighters in the world, right? Been one of the hottest prospects for the last couple of years in the women's division. Blows out her knee. Has surgery. Recovering from it. She's coming back. And we're looking for a fight. There's everybody's fighting or somebody's hurt or whatever. So it was nobody. So Irene Aldana, you know, she likes to stay busy. We give her the fight. And what, what does she rank? 12, 12 or 13 or, or, or something, right? And goes in and knocks her out, viciously knocks her out. Now, I'm sure many of you know her like I know her. One of the sweetest people you will ever meet. Hardworking, a grinder, loves to fight, loves to train could not happen to a better human being it's always awesome when you see good things happen to good people so i'm I'm very happy for her could she be next and is there any truth in the fact that amanda says the next uh <clears throat> fight for her will be at 145 for sure is that what she said yeah okay um yeah i don't i don't know you know tuesday we'll go back in the room and we start looking over what happened here tonight and what, what we want to do next. If it's at 35, would Aldana be the... Uh, well, it's gonna, we'll, we'll see where you guys rank her, you know? After winning that fight, we'll see where she gets ranked and we'll figure out what's next for her. But, yeah, impressive. Makes sense. Great show, Dana. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Uh, hey, Dana. So uh, Colby was just venting on Twitter uh, saying fake nutshot, fake eye poke, fake stoppage, fake ref. Do you have any issue with the stoppage at all? I think it was strange. Did you think the it was stoppage? Good, did you think it was a good stoppage? Absolutely. Positively a good stoppage, yeah. What do you make of his response? Just disappointed fighter? Or? What, what, yeah, what are you going to do? Fake eye poke? Apparently he didn't watch the replay. Nut shot? He's right there. That was on the, that was on the belt. It was on the belt. And how did you score Marais versus Aldo? I, I had Aldo win in that fight. What do you think comes next for him? Well, Henry Cejudo texted me tonight and said, that's bullshit. He didn't lose that fight. He won that fight. And I want to treat him like he did. 
he wants to fight Jose Aldo. You like that? I don't hate it. I don't hate it. Um, and then what happens for Uriah Faber from here, in your opinion? You know, Uriah looked good tonight. If you think about, look, Uriah doesn't want to hear that he's old, but unfortunately, Uriah, you're old, okay? And he looked amazing in his last fight, right? Comes out and beats a guy that most people probably didn't think he was going to beat. And he looked damn good tonight until Jan started catching him and, and lighting him up. And uh, Faber's tough. He's durable. He's well-rounded. He's a good fighter. But the question starts to become, I don't think anybody in this room would disagree with me if I said he could fight again. We could put him in with somebody else. You know, this guy's fighting. He's not in here fighting bums. This guy's fighting the best guys in the world. But the question becomes why? Why? You're a legend. You've done it all. You're 40 years old. And you've done everything that you can achieve other than money. He makes money. He's got a gym. He's got other businesses going on. Um, he's got a beautiful family. Why? That's something he needs to talk about um, with his wife and other people that care about him. Hey, Dana, did the doctors confirm that Colby's jaw was broken before he went to the hospital? Uh, yeah, his jaw's broken. You said you didn't hate the idea of Aldo and Cejudo, but you don't think Peter Jan would deserve it before? Yeah, 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 but Jan's in there too. I'm just saying, Cejudo says, I want Aldo. Cejudo is the man right now, you know? Uh, if you look at what Cejudo is, has accomplished, if he says, I want Jose Aldo, um, I think Jose Aldo win. I mean, how many, how many people in here think Jose Aldo won the fight? Uh, most of the room thinks that Jose Aldo won the fight. Uh, it's, you know, if that's what he wants to do next, we could do it. I don't have a problem with it. I'm sure people would want to see it. To your to your right, Dana. Hi. Hi there. It's the final fight card of the decade for the promotion. When you get in the room and uh, on Tuesday, what are you looking forward to the most for 2020 and beyond? We're coming off the best year the company's ever had. 19 was our best year. We broke pretty much every record we had. And uh, I love the lineup that we have going into 2020. We have some fun fights. And if things play out certain ways, you know, we're going to end up having five or six massive, massive fights. I mean, we're doing, what are we doing, 12 pay-per-views? And five or six of these are going to be huge. I like breaking records. It's fun. And uh, I'm looking forward to 2020. I'm not looking forward to being a year older, but I'm looking forward to 2020. You don't want me? Oh, go ahead. What about Floyd Mayweather? He's going to fight a UFC fighter to 2020. What was the question? What about Floyd? Yeah, Floyd Mayweather? Yeah, so F Floyd and I did a deal uh, the Clippers game, Cel Clippers, Celtics, and, and L.A. And uh, I think that he and I will probably, you know, we, we both think that we add value to what each other does and we could do something together. You know, both of us together is more powerful than both of us not together. So we'll probably start, I'll probably start talking to Heyman this summer. Is he going to fight a uh, UFC fighter? I don't know what we're going to do yet. We're going to see how a lot of things play out in both sports. I'm just not a UFC guy anymore, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they look good, man, both guys. He said we had two contender series guys tonight make their debuts. They look good. Um, yeah, I don't even know what to say other than yeah, yeah. They look great. All you have to do is show up to one of these things live and watch it, and it completely validates what we're doing there. It's... it's uh, it's awesome. If you've never been to one of those live, you guys need to come out and, and do it. I, I know it's expensive probably to travel from other places and come do it, but I'm telling you, it's so worth it. You ask any of the media people that have been there, and it, it's, it's unbelievable. And 
the level of talent that we're pulling out of there is incredible. Um, the kid Hooper, you know, Sean, we, 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 we've been grooming this kid for a while. Sean was worried about putting him in. He's only 20 years old. I mean, <laughs> kids um, going to the M&M factory to make some, <laughs> some fucking, what, what, are the, uh, what do they call them? You make your own M&Ms, right? That's how young that kid is. So uh, we were worried about putting him in too soon. And uh, he looked good tonight. You know, he fought a real guy, tough guy, an animal, and uh, and, and he pulled it off. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see what he can do. And then Puna's a savage. <laughs> yeah, we talked about him, didn't we? Didn't I talk about Jeff Neal with somebody? Yeah, yeah. To go in and do what he did to him, the way that he did. And he looked big tonight, too. Is it me or did he look huge? Yeah, he looked huge tonight. Um yeah, nasty performance. I'm gonna send him some money too. Now that you make me think of that, yeah, I gotta put that down. I'm gonna, uh, yeah. I'm gonna send, congrats. Thanks, thanks for helping that kid out. I'm gonna send him some money. Yeah. You, you, you guys good? Happy holidays, everybody. Thank you very much.